Okay, so we've done some calculations of pH and that sort of thing with strong acids, and they were not too bad. And uh, this is where the other shoe drops, unfortunately. For weak acids, the calculations are a little bit harder. And I'm going to take you through how this works, just so you know that the formula we use is not magic. When you have a weak acid, uh, they're saying HA. Let's just go with that. So hydrogen something. You know what? Let's use a real acid. I like that better. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. And if you put it in water, you can get a Bronsted-Lowry reaction where the HF gives away a hydrogen and you get H3O. And at the same time, you will inevitably get fluoride ions. We can write an equilibrium constant reaction for this. And when you do, you do products over reactants, and the products are H3O and fluoride. And in the reactants, you have HF. HF. And you don't have water, typically, because liquids are not counted unless the entire reaction is about liquids, which is not the case here. So that is what we normally write for our equilibrium constant. That's the precise version of it. And there is a cheat that we very often use that we're going to use here, where we say, since this acid produces H3O and fluoride in equal amounts, these two numbers should be the same. Because they are the same, what we're going to write for the top is, this is H3O. Technically, this is the same number as H3O. And so we simplify it down to H3O squared over HF. And that's our K. Let's get rid of this middle step now that you've seen it. So this is our slightly cheating formula for the equilibrium constant. When we write this for an acid, it's often called the acid constant or the acid dissociation constant or the acid equilibrium constant. And it usually gets the symbol Ka. And if you look in your data book on the acid base table, you will see that all of the acids except the top six have an acid constant associated with them that tells you how good they are at giving away hydrogen. The higher that number is, the more the equilibrium favors the products, the more hydrogen you will get. A really low K means you tend to you have a delinquent acid that doesn't do a heck of a lot. It sits and doesn't release hydrogen. So if we have this rating, HF is the original concentration of our acid, or technically it's the equilibrium concentration of our acid. We generally assume they are the same. That's another minor cheat that we're using here. H3O is a number we're well acquainted with finding. We can get it from pH or from OH or a number of other ways. And this is a number that we can either be given or that we can look up in our data book. So this is not magic. It came from stuff we already know about how equilibrium constants work. But for the next several pages, I'm going to be pulling out this formula kind of out of nowhere. And I wanted you to know where it comes from. There's this version of it where it's used to find Ka. The other thing you can do with it is if you multiply both sides by HF, you can get here H3O squared equals Ka times HF. And then I could square root both sides. And this is a form that we'll use kind of often. H3O is the square root of Ka times... Now, I've been using HF as my specific example, but this can be any weak acid. So where this says HF, and where this would have said HF, we could actually say any acid at all, as long as it's weak. So this is the concentration of your acid. This is the concentration of your acid. And both of these formulae are fair game. You can either memorize them, or you can remember how to write this formula and then derive what the K is, and then manipulate it to get to here. Uh, I kind of think they're worth memorizing because we, we use them kind of often, but only you know how much space you have free in your brain and which of these methods you find easier to deal with. So 
finding K and using K to get H3O. This is the one we use more often, I think, although on page one I'm going to look like a liar because they are going to ask for Ks a couple of times. Good. Okay, let's see if we can do this. So we have a solution of a weak acid. This is our acid concentration. They didn't give us the H3O except that they pretty much did. They gave us the pH and that's enough to get us going. So let's find H3O. H3O is 10 to the minus pH, so it's 10 to the minus 5. There's the 5 right there. And they tell, we're told that our K is the concentration of H3O squared divided by the concentration of the original acid. And this isn't, this is a general K, but I'll call it Ka just to remind us. So H3O is 10 to the minus 5. We're going to square that. And downstairs we get the acid concentration, which was 0 0.15. To the calculators we go. Oops. Almost made a scientific notation mistake, but I caught it. 6.66666 times 10 to the minus 10. Now, how many sig digs in this? This has two. This also has two, because remember in a pH the whole number part doesn't count. So our answer should be two significant digits, so 6.7 times 10 to the minus 10. Ks do not normally have units, even though this looks like it should have units of moles per liter, because it's concentration squared over concentration. We, j we pretty much always ignore the units and say that a K is dimensionless, so there's that. Some books don't agree with that, and they will put units of like moles per liter on these. Just ignore it. It doesn't make any difference to how you use the K. So I don't think it's worth it. Uh, what's up with this new one? We give a weak acid. They call it HB this time, whatever. It's the point is it's hydrogen attached to something. That's what a weak acid is. We have the concentration of the acid. 0 0.37. The H3O is 10 to the minus 3.5, which is 3.1, what am I doing here? Two significant, no, one significant digit for the answer because they gave us a sloppy pH. So if I do 3.16 for this, that should be plenty of extra sig digs. 3.16 times 10 to the minus 4. is our concentration for H3O. And so our acid constant is H3O squared remember to square it over the original acid concentration which is 0 0.37 uh, divided by 0.37 and from that I get well, I get 2.7 times 10 to the minus 7, but to one significant digit, that's got to be just 3 times 10 to the minus 7. This number only has one significant digit, so that's the best we can do for our answer also, or for anything that's calculated based on that number. Okay, uh, same thing, except now they're being all lovely and giving us the H3O, so we don't have to do that extra step. For a uh, Hockel, we get, uh, this is a, uh, hypochlorite, so it would be hypochlorous acid. The K is H3O, 5.9 times 10 to the minus 5, remember to square it, divided by, and the original acid was 0 0.1. So 5.9 times 10 to the minus 5 squared, divided by 0.1 the acid constant for this apparently is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if I counted that correctly. That's okay. And then C2H5COOH is what? Propanoic? Yeah, propanoic acid, because three carbons, propane, and then the carboxyl group makes it propanoate, and then the hydrogen makes it propanoic acid. The H3O is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 
square it, because we're using that number twice, once for the hydrogen, once for its conjugate base. The original acid was 0 0.15. And then we calculate stuff. 1.4 E3 minus is how I'm doing this, squared, divided by 0 0.15. And this is getting two significant digits, so 1.3 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think. It's tricky counting a long line of identical looking zeros. My eyes go a little buggy doing that, but I'm pretty sure that's 10 to the minus 5. Okay, carbolic acid, widely used as a disinfectant. I've heard that too. One such solution has a concentration of blah and a pH of 5.6. Okay, well, we're finding K again. This is H3O. We're going to square it. And down here is the original concentration of, or the, sorry, I should, shouldn't say that, the equilibrium concentration of the acid, which is very close to the original concentration of the acid. So the acid started out at 6.44 times 10 to the minus 2. Times 10 to the minus 2. And what's our H3O? Do we have it? Kind of. It's 10 to the minus 5.6. We have to calculate that. They didn't give it to us. And for that, I get 2.512 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it looks like. So we take that number, square it, and divide by 6.44 times 10 to the minus 2. And from that, I get 9.3 sig digs, 3 sig digs. OK, the whole thing's 3 sig digs. 9.80, then, is our three significant digits times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, 0.3 mole per liter solution of acid has same thing again. They don't give us the H3O, but we can find it. It's 10 to the minus pH. So 10 to the minus 3.371. From that, I get 4.256. It's going to be a three sig dig answer, so four sig digs is probably OK. 4.25, yeah. 4.256 times 10 to the minus 4. Remember to square it. I almost forgot. And original concentration of the acid was 0 0.3. So H3O squared divided by 0.3. I find that the K for this is 6.04. My calculator barely shows enough sig digs. Times 10 to the minus 7. OK, uh, similar thing again. Anthocyanins are responsible for that color of wine. They can react with water as follows. So what are these things? These are some positive ion. They're giving away hydrogen, are they? What does this thing do? Yeah, this has got to be just the same formula, except they're they're giving us weird chemicals, but this is the initial concentration of the anthocyanins they give it. These, we have to assume, are the same amount because they're produced in one-to-one -one ratio, so yeah, I don't think this changes our drill very much, even though their notation looks a little odd. The concentration of H3O is given. Nice. 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Remember to square it. Original concentration was 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3. And we calculate 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4 squared divided by 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3. And what that gives us to two significant digits is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, 
we have a problem with this one and I wasn't sure if they were going to bring this up and now they brought it up and the problem with this one is that this acid has a fairly high K and its concentration originally was fairly low and that's a recipe for trouble when we've been doing this formula sorry we need to talk this one just got more complicated when we write our Ka formula we do H3O squared divided by and we've been using the original concentration of the acid the trouble with that is some of this acid is dissociating so the amount that we have at equilibrium is not going to be the same as the original amount it's going to be a little bit less now in a lot of these questions the concentration of the acid was quite high and the K for the acid was low meaning not very much of it dissociated and that meant we were only losing a tiny bit of our original acid and so saying that the amount was unchanged was okay it's like saying you leave the house with fifty thousand dollars and then you buy a chocolate bar how much money do you have now basically you still have fifty thousand the amount that you've spent barely made a dent in the amount that you're carrying so it's okay to just fudge it and say you pretty much still have fifty thousand that's not the case here here this acid started out with not very much as far as concentration and so it becomes dicey to say that this concentration is unchanged so I think we're going to have to address that